find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It's the awesome cast on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter from the studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, we're going to have some fun here. Back in the studio this week is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. Uh, how you doing? You're back. I'm back. Sorry we had to clear a couch was, for you yeah, last week. Yeah, I wasn't even allowed in the studio No, no, it's like, week. no, we got we we got Linux people. I, I'm sorry. I was in exile. No You're in exile. I, need, I don't have enough cameras. <laughs> I don't have enough cameras. I have seating. I don't have enough. We could have put you in front of the green screen, maybe. Um, I'll bring a camera. <laughs> So we'll we'll I got, work I got on that. Some spares. Got some spares. Um, I, I've been wanting. I've been thinking about like putting just people in front of the green screen, and we'll just give them whatever. As That'd long as it cool. doesn't, it doesn't. As long as it doesn't melt the computer while we're live broadcasting and keying at the same time, I'm sure nothing will go wrong. <laughs> um, and also with us uh, from, he's a transplant from Pittsburgh to the Boston area. He's Jim Loke. He's an anchor up there with WCVB. Uh, Channel 5 up in Boston. I, I looked at the letters on my keyboard again. I said that's a perfect way to do it. That's it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. He's like, look at the, look at the bottom row right of your keyboard. I'm like, that's it. How? How? But how are things going up there? <laughs> things are great up here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm enjoying some of the some of the uh, the, the local local cuisine. Um, no, things are fantastic up here. You know, it's uh, it's a beautiful time of year. Uh, I think we had about 75 degrees here today. So uh, beautiful day to be outside and just enjoying things. Awesome, awesome. And I know we, we kind of landed you here um, by chance, I guess, on a, a pretty important anniversary for you. Yeah, it was uh, three years ago today was my last newscast on KDK, and and I'm, I'm sort of, uh, uh, you know, it's it's been an interesting three years, that's for sure. But it's 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 been it's been a good run. It definitely has been a good run up here. Awesome. It's been fun watching uh, uh, kind of your adventure there, uh, at least you know uh, from afar uh, to see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, consider everything that, uh, that we've kind of been through up here, and uh, we had, uh, you know, from, from from let's see, the Super Bowl. So I had to go cover a New England Patriots Super Bowl, which you know, f- as a Steelers fan, that was interesting. Um, going from that to uh, to the marathon to uh, <laughs> I've been covering Ebola now, so uh, hell of a long way from the Parkway East, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning, it's like, hey, loki has got to tell me how the Parkway is, right? Um, yeah. I, if you, you never follow, he's, he's at Loki on the Twitter. So this is the kind of stuff you can expect. I, I love this. Uh, uh, I don't know what's going on. You got the iPhones going on here. Okay, yeah. So that's my co-anchor, Antoinette Antonio, and she still has a 4S, and I have a 6. So <laughs> we, had, we, we did a little side-by-side comparison. And uh, she wanted to just take pictures of our phone side by side, and I said, "No, no, no, we got to have some fun with this." So uh, she, she's uh, she's very jealous, but uh, I, I'm, I'm I'm kind of amazed, and I know I know that this is a, a topic that's kind of long past, but I, I I kind of went into the whole iPhone six planning for the plus, and uh, I'm kind of glad I stuck with this. But it, it's still it's amazing when you see the side by side; it's striking how 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 big they are. Yeah, Did actually. You- Oh, go ahead. Would would you switch from? Were you a five or a four? I was. A, I actually was a five S. Okay. Um, I had a five S, and and I, I it, it did me very well. In fact, I, I carry a five S for work. I had a personal one and a work one. And uh, you know what's amazing is I know around the Pittsburgh area, Verizon has I think stronger coverage than AT and T does. Now I've always been an AT and T guy. Up here, it's kind of switched around. So I haven't. My personal is an AT and T. My work is a Verizon. Um, but I think, you know, either, either way it's, it's, um, I think the six is, is, uh, is, it's been a good change for me. That's for sure. I've, I've, I've really kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. But I, I went with a six because a six plus carrying two phones around would be a little too cumbersome. I, I know a couple of people that went from the four to the six and the one person went from the four to the six plus Jeez. and it, the, just, they were like, it's so big Yeah. going from the five to the six. It's not too bad. I still think the six plus would be a bit on the. On the large size. It's too much. Yeah. It's too much. I actually haven't seen a plus in person yet. A lot of people are popping up with sixes, though. Mm-hmm. So, awesome. I have a buddy at work that I should, his six plus, I should be able to see see that in person this week. Nice. He got his in the mail. 
Nice. Um, well, anyways, hey, this is the Awesome Cast. It's episode 220. Uh, we're recording here live every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time at, uh, at sor- live.sorgatronmedia.com, or we get the link over there at awesomecast.net. I know Chachi's in the chat room, says he's tuning in solely for Jim Loke tonight. Um, so, uh, you can also drop us a line. We're at Sorgas, I'm sorry, at AwesomeCast on Twitter, and you can look up AwesomeCast on Google Plus and Facebook, and please subscribe to us. We're on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spre- Spreaker, and iHeartRadio, uh, for audio and video, or you can sign up for the, uh, the, uh, Sorgatron Media Everything feed, just everything we do. We have a lot. We have a lot going on. Uh, but you can look up the Sorgatron Media Everything feed on Stitcher and iTunes, uh, currently, so you can just get the feed of everything going out. Oh, also, a big plug to our friends, uh, well, myself included, I guess, at insertcoinbegin.com. They're doing Extra Life. They're going to be doing a uh, 24-hour gameathon. We'll be streaming live right here on live.sorgatronmedia.com as well. Um, that's going to be taking place October 25th. In the meantime, if you go to sorgatronmedia.com, awesomecast.net, any of our network sites, uh, we got a link, uh, uh, an ad over there on the side for Extra Life. Please drop in, donate to any of us. I don't feel bad that I'm the only one without donations so far. So, you know, I'm not I'm not saying anything, but, you know, um, but go please check it out. Either way, I don't care who you donate for, um, but just uh-huh. go donate to help out uh, some kids and in, in, with some video games. So let's get into it with our awesome things of the week. Chilla, you, of course, I was thinking about you in home automation today. <laughs> Did I you was. see it? I actually it was it surprised me. So uh, I was walking downstairs in the building i work in the steel building downtown and i had already picked out my awesome thing of the week and lo and behold on like i don't know if it was cnbc one of the they have they now have tvs all over the lobby doing news all the time um they they this was actually front and center i'm like hey that's i'm doing that for awesome cast today so my item is and i don't even know what it what is called <laughs> honestly august's it's made by August. It's a dead. It's a. It's an electronic deadbolt. And one of the things that that I always look for is it's actually just called August. Um, one of the things I look for, and it, the better picture is if you scroll down to the break apart of the lock. There you go. Um, so it's it replaces your deadbolt, and it, you can also slide it over the deadbolt. So you don't actually have to replace your entire lock mechanism and rekey everything. Cool. So this is big for people in apartments too, right? Like one of the things that, that was a pain when, when we rented an apartment and moved to a house, any of the plugs that I had replaced or any anything that I had modified, I now then had to dismantle and take out of the house or out of the apartment when we moved into the house and then take out their plugs and replace them with my plugs. So this kind of gives you a nice alternative to being able to A, unlock your door from your cell phone. B, obviously it still allows you to use the existing external piece of the lock mechanism and use all the same keys. um, And you can unlock your door. Um, It runs on, it looks like two AA batteries, which is something that seems like everybody's doing. Obviously you have to run electrical to this. Um, it's a little pricey at $250, um, but I would actually think about getting it based on the fact that a lot of my family needs to get into the house at different times to, you know, change kitty litter while we're away on vacation um, or just being able to not not have to drop keys off at people's houses and stuff like that if, if they're if they're house sitting for us. So with this, you can give electronic keys Um and, al- and allow people to unlock your door and also revoke those keys. One of the things that this was announced a while back and it took them a little while longer than they had expected, but it was because they were trying to get it to work with as many deadbolts as possible. Um, some people are questionable about the device because it only replaces your deadbolt. It does not replace the lock on the actual handle or the, the doorknob part. Um, we rarely lock the doorknob part, to be honest with you. We're always flipping the deadbolt. So to me, and I'm thinking like at my grandparents' house and my my mom's house, she only has a deadbolt with a lock. They have like the pretty ornate key or button that you push down for the other part. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely thinking about this. I'm waiting to see more reviews of people who have it. Um, 
Obviously, it relies on Bluetooth LE, so a lot of the Windows Phone devices are going to be out um, in the forefront, but iOS and Androids devices should have no issue with it. And this is mostly independent. Like this isn't something that's going to tie into like the rest of your automation or I don't know. So or obviously maybe HomeKit is going to solve maybe all that. HomeKit's <laughs> going to solve all that. Right. So if, if it, if they're HomeKit compliant, I really don't have to worry about it. Um, and how much do you really need to tie into the rest of, well, I guess if, I mean, we always have our deadbolt locked. We don't leave, the front door unlocked at any given time. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I would set it like when I'm when I hit go to bed at night and certain lights turn on and certain lights turn off and certain other things occur. It's not like I need it to lock the door because we always have our door locked. Not that we live in a bad neighborhood or anything. It's just out of habit, I guess. <laughs> I don't just, just this day and age. Yeah, I, I, I've always I've always locked my dead bowl when I came home. Mm hmm. Of course, everywhere I've lived, also the the door didn't always stay shut if you didn't lock the deadbolt. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I could I could see it being useful. I I like the idea. I also like the idea of I'd probably put it on the back door first because coming up from bringing in groceries from outside, you mm-hmm. get close to the door, or you could remotely unlock it and just push the door open on the way in. So I don't know. I I. Like I said, $250 is a little steep. I want to see some reviews. Are we going to see firmware updates for these types of hardware, things of that nature? I have some Wemo light switches mm-hmm. and um, outlet pass-throughs. And I, the, the good and bad is I probably get firmware updates every three months. So you have to update the firmware on your light switch and update and that's That's a firmware. Belkin? That's a Belkin. Product that looks like? Yeah. I think I found it here. Yes. And I love that light switch, too, because when it's when the lights are off, the little black dot in the center of the button Mm -hmm. illuminates. Oh, so you can see the light in in the pitch black of the room. You can see where the light switch is. And when you turn it on, the light goes off. So and it flashes yellow when it's getting a firmware update. Nice. Nice. Jim, Okay, you got an awesome thing of the week as, as well in the App Store. I was going through, I was going between a couple of things, one that was kind of Pittsburgh centered, but I think this one, it's, it's something that, you know, we have have to all admit that we're getting older. We have to start thinking about our future and whether you're employed, whether you're self-employed, you know, investing and and getting ready for retirement is a big thing. And and there's an app I found called Acorns. Um, And what it does is it connects to your, to your checking accounts. And every time you make a purchase, it rounds up. And then once you get to $5 in roundups, it deposits it into a uh, into an account in which you can invest, and it's all self guided. Uh, you know, it, it 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 comes up with a suggested plan, but it's very simple. I think um, you know, first of all, it's very amazing when you think about all these little purchases you make. You know, a buck fifty here, you know, five dollars there. Uh, how quickly it adds up. I think I think you know, after a couple of months, I was already up to about you know one hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, put aside in an investment account, but it's nice because it, it, it does it, it effectively invests the money. Um, I think it, it's a very I think it's maybe a five dollar maintenance fee or something like that to to maintain the account. But uh, it's it's one of those things where it's it, it's it's you know you can be a dummy like me with no eye for finance and uh, you're you're an investor. I, Bank of America for a number of years has done something called Keep the Change where. If you have an account through Bank of America, it rounds up to the nearest dollar and puts it in a savings account. Well, in the Pittsburgh area, there there are no Bank of Americas, and Bank of America is not really a great uh, a great bank to begin with in the first place. So uh, this is a, a foolproof way to plan for your future. It's I think a, a brilliant idea. Uh, I think the only question I have for it is how long will it be around for? Uh, you know, your, your your deposits are protected in some way, shape, or form, but uh, you know, at some point you're going to have to you know down the road decide okay am i going to take this money and put it into a big boy account but for the time being you know it's 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 nice to uh nice to to start planning for your future and not even have to really think about it in the first place i could really use that (laughs) yeah and yeah i'm this is yeah i i'm really thinking like that's a brilliant way because i like try every paycheck to put some money in an account or do this or that but this makes it seem so minimal as you go along yeah, that I feel like I just wouldn't really miss it. 
now to your no. point is, I mean, it's a portfolio company, so I'm guessing. I mean, they're they're backed. Yeah. So I I don't know. Will someone will a, will a larger company buy them? But and the fees do seem. I'm very interested in this. Yeah, and I think also the, one of the other one of the other interesting aspects of it is that um, well, first of all, if, you, if if it's a flat dollar amount, if it's five or six bucks, it just automatically rounds it up a dollar from that. Okay. Um, but one of the nice things too is that if you need to withdraw the money, you can do that without penalty. Um, you can take your money out really at any given moment. Oh. So if you want to, if you, if you need it, if you want to give up on it, so it's kind of a, again, it's it's you know it's an investment account, but it's also a savings account. It's nice to you can use it as a little emergency uh, emergency nest egg if you need it. But it's an app; it resides on your phone, and that's it. Um, you know, it, it. I believe you know the banks do enough due diligence to know that okay, if I'm going to give them my login for for my bank back in Pittsburgh, um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be in good hands. So Acorns, I think, is a, is a uh, it's just a brilliant little thing, and I think I think. If it gets critical mass, I guarantee you it's going to be ripe. I mean, right across the street from here, we have, a, oh, geez, about 10 years ago, I opened up an account with ING Direct, uh, an online online checking account, which became so popular because there were so minimal fees that Capital One bought them up, bought them up and Capital One has basically launched a, uh, you know, launched consumer banks based upon that platform. And right across the street from my apartment, they opened up a, Capital One 360 branch, which is basically a Pete's Coffee uh, that just happens to be a bank branch tucked away in the little in, in the back of, in the back of the store. So um, I think it's sort of the new generation of banking for those of us who really don't go into branches anymore. And uh, I'm I'm going to be interested to see really how this uh, how this uh, how this pans out in the long run. So how do they how do they get the roundup? You were saying some do you you give them your do you give them your yeah account? yeah you give them yeah you give them the login to your bank account which which you know there there are certain um you know again there's certain there's certain protocol that, that that banks as a whole will take before they allow companies to to take that information mm -hmm. um so you know PNC Bank is fully aware that Acorns is going into my account once a week and and, and you know taking out you know a couple of bucks mm -hmm. uh, but I I've I just to test it out I did take some money out and and I got my money back and. Um, you know, you you could throw uh, you could throw amounts in there. You know, and if you want to throw you know an extra five or six bucks in there from time to time, you can do that. But uh, the portfolio is right there on my app, and and you can kind of uh, you can kind of timeline out from now through a year, two, three years from now. If you just continue at your current pace, how much money could theoretically be in your in your uh, in your little account there? Hmm. Hmm. I really like. So it goes in once a week. You're saying it goes in once a week? Uh, it, it, it's on average. I mean, what it does is it it takes your it takes your deposits. Uh, and it doesn't pull it out until you get to five bucks. Okay. So now I can go on the app and it says, okay, you have four dollars and twenty cents in roundups. Um, throw another eighty cents in, and we'll take five dollars out right now. Okay. So it's you know I think it does it that way. I, I think you know one of the danger, the dangers of, of something like that is if you if you tend to keep a low a low balance in your accounts, um, you know if it were if it were making those roundups after every transaction. And you got to a low, you know, you had a low balance. You could be in some serious trouble there. But uh, you know, it, it's also easy to stop it if you need to put a freeze on it. You can go on, go on, go ahead and do that. So I've been I've been using it for about you know for about uh, yeah, three or four months now, and it's it's very very uh, uh, very user friendly. I nice. like it. Nice. Um, and, and it looks like from the site that it it is uh, iOS and Android, so uh, I guess I can use it. Uh, the site is acorns.com and they're coming out with a web app soon. There's a web app coming soon. So, I, I mean, it doesn't seem like a thing that requires you to have an iPhone or app to use, right? No, well, I, I think, I think once, yeah, I, that obviously that's how I use it, but I'm obviously at, at a point, um, at a point, uh, you, you, you can get to, I, I think it makes perfect sense where you can get to a point where you're not going to need it. And, and, it, and the, the concept itself, I think it's just for easy access to information. You know, it's right there, right there in your hand. Cool. Cool. So you, yeah, the only way you could actually sign up and use it right now is on iOS and Android. It looks like so looks that's like. where they're saying if you want to sign up over the the web, the web app, you can sign up to be notified when it's ready. So they must have no user interface developed. It, it seems the, like it, uh, the, the website is pretty is pretty uh, pretty utilitarian. There's really yeah, nothing mm -hmm. on there aside from a link, but uh, pretty much and I think I think at first, you know, that was a little hesitation on my part. Um 
but you know, going on what I've seen, you know, you kind of you kind of base your 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 uh, your interaction and your trust upon what other people have done so far, and uh, it seemed to be universally positive. So I, again, I haven't had any problem with it, and I keep hoping to grab my phone nearby and and, and hold it up and show you, but I, I it's in the other room right now, so. I could, I could yell I could yell Hey Siri from here and, and see what it does, but uh, it's plugged <laughs> and it, in. And it does go into the site about the privacy, about security. Yeah. Um, I saw in the in the updates when I was looking at the iOS, it does support like Touch ID for your login and everything. Um, so. Well, and I think this just goes to show, though. I think it goes to show that what we're talking. Oh, it's only it's, there's no web version. It's only available on a on a smartphone. I mean. There's so many companies that are taking this mobile first initiative. IBM being yeah. one of them. They, they probably realize that if they spend, if they need to get to market and hit the most people that are going to use something like this, mm-hmm. hitting the smartphones first and then looping back around to the browsers is mm-hmm. probably going to get them more of the clientele that's more apt to use this. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's a very good point there because I, I think if, if, you know, if uh, citizens bank decided to roll out some, something like that tomorrow, and, and you know, you go to your branch and sign up for it. You know, I, I don't think many, many, many people who go into a bank branch on a regular basis are going to be interested. Mm-hmm. Even though, again, Bank of America had a pretty good thing going with their keep the change, uh, keep the change accounts, which I think they still have, they still offer. But again, I, I don't deal with Bank of America, uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's just. I, I, I think that's one of the things. You know, it, it's. You know, I have a four hundred one k at work, which you know I get statements on it. I really don't touch it. I know that uh, when I had a four hundred one k back in you know two thousand eight and two thousand nine, when I was back at KDK and, and CBS stock, you know, dropped from thirty some bucks down to you know down to four dollars. Um, you know, that was that was a good amount of money that I had lost, and you know, fortunately, um, it kind of bounced back up over time, but. You know, it's, 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 I think it's, I think it's not, I don't think it's a bad idea. And I'm not speaking as anybody with any really financial acumen, but it's just nice to be able to, you know, know that you're throwing some money aside and it's doing something, you mm-hmm, know, it's doing mm-hmm. something for you. For me, I'm just bad saving across the board. Oh, <laughs> the choir, buddy. Um, so I, I think that's the perfect thing that's like just to put a little like emergency nest egg aside. If you're somebody who's bad, of uh, you know you know every time i see this much money in front of me it's like well i gotta take care of all of this you know yeah um so it's, it's hard to be like well let's put 500 aside of, of that and it's like but i got bills to pay man you know <laughs> but, and but i look that's, at, that's a perfect way to look at that i think i look at it too is i mean you use the transactions you make on a weekly basis let's just say on the high side and this is completely completely ridiculously high say you made 10 transactions a day Mm -hmm. you'd be looking at well you'd be looking at up to 70 dollars a week i'm thinking i make like between two and three transactions a day maximum so it's max 21 dollars so i mean that's not bad yeah i mean i could i could i could forgo a couple things if if times were tough and i i had to worry about the $21 a week. Mm-hmm. But I, I look at it as in the long run, the money you're getting back in the investments. Mm-hmm. Well, one other thing you can do with it, which I think is kind of kind of a, a smart idea, you know, through my bank account, um, when I use ATMs, I get the fees refunded to me. Mm-hmm. And you can go into the app and you can say, hey, look, I got $4 back. I'm just going to, I'm just going to invest that rather than keeping it in my account. Right. So you can you can take those fees those small those small those small little uh, uh, incremental dollar amounts and you can throw that into your account as well. So it kind of gives you a way to say you know basically money that you weren't expecting to get or money you thought you were was out the window anyway. You can kind of uh, uh, take it and, and and tuck it away. I like your it. acorn, if you will. Yes. Nice squirrel it away. Yes. Exactly. Well, I got I got an app uh, also for a little bit of mindfulness, uh, but more towards your time. Um, I, I forget where I came across this a couple weeks ago, but I've had it running for a little bit. It's called Checky. You can check it out at CheckyApp.com. And uh, more or less, it just kind of tells you how many times you check into your iPhone. Um, I actually attended a little bit of a seminar talk a couple months ago. I talked about it on the on the Good Morning podcast. Um, but it talked about like kind of your presence and and how, well, it was, it was mostly about productivity. 
And it's like, mm-hmm. well, how much how much do you look at your phone and how much are you maybe addicted to uh, uh, looking at Twitter, or looking at this stuff? So this app actually keeps track on how many times you check your phone. Um, the first couple of days when I tried it, I, I apparently checked my phone about 70 times in a day. Um, I'm up to like 39 for today. Um, so it, it's it's just kind of a, you know, what are my habits? How, how much am I on this thing? So. Uh, but you can check out checkyapp.com and you can tweet it. You can share it. You know, it, it's pretty simple. It, it does like one thing and, th- and that's about it. Um, but kind of connected to that. And this kind of connects to an ongoing uh, conversation we've been having on some of the other podcasts. Um, Wheels just actually shared this in the chat room. Uh, if you guys want to grab it out there, I'll put it in the document as well. Uh here, look, okay, I'll bump that over to you. A Google user treated for internet addiction caused by the device. So apparently, uh, apparently this guy would wear it for up to 18 hours a day, uh, removing it only, only to sleep and watch and cl- complained of feeling irritable and argumentative without the device. Um, skimming through the article, uh, it looks like, you know, we talked about how um, we didn't think alcoholism was a problem at first, too. And, um, and this, this is kind of... Again, kind of an ongoing conversation because we've we've had some discussions. We're actually going to have her on the uh, Journal of Lifestyle Medicine podcast next week, I believe. Um, uh, Nancy Marammer, who does a book called Get Real, Produce Your Own Life, is talking about how we watch TV and how we consume all this media and and Twitter and everything. Um, so I, I thought, you know, I get your thoughts on this. You know, well, first of all, do, you guys are techies. I mean, we're obviously like the you know, the uh, we always often say we're not the normal people. We're not the normal people using iPhones. We're kind of, you know, chill a test. Like, I don't know how many things. Loke, you have like a house of Apple products. I know from the one time, um, <laughs> I, you know, and I feel like of, of, of all the people, we're probably the people that are on technology the most out of those around us. Uh, do you feel a certain course of addiction to it uh, yourselves? Or, or do you see other people that do have a problem with this around you? I, can... I, I I certainly think I, I mean I think I can admit that there's some sort of level of addiction there. Um, you know, in some regards, it's uh, you know trying to make sure you're you're kind of connected to everything. I mean, last weekend, perfect example is you know during the Steeler game last weekend, uh, uh, during the debacle last week, um, I, I kind of lose track of the Steeler debacles anymore. But uh, but it's uh, it, it you know we we had a, we had a breaking story that I kind of uh, had a hand in, in 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 exposing the night before. So you know the entire time I'm just I'm checking Twitter at every at every instance to make sure nobody else kind of stole the story or had any, any information on that. But I, I think there's there's a general fear of uh, of of being disconnected, and I think that's one of the you know I I, I yeah I have, I carry two iPhones with me. Uh, I'm at the gym. I'm you know I'm I'm on the treadmill. I'm thinking okay this is dead. I could sit here and I could pedal or I could look at my phone and check Twitter. And I think that's one of the things that social media has done to me is sort of maybe a little more reliant on that, which is, you know, not necessarily a good thing, but you know, it's sort of the world that we live in. And that's sort of the, uh, the, the, the perils of being, you know, as a job, having to be connected 24 seven being a, a prerequisite. Mm-hmm. Uh, very similar here because, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of, you know, with these shows and with, um, with uh, some clients that I do social media for, I'm always worried I'm going to miss something happened. You know, especially with Twitter, like one thing I say is like, you know, make sure nobody's out there bashing your product or something. Mm-hmm. Right. So you kind of do have to keep an ear out. And there's there's still the like check the email, make sure there's not a fire before you go to bed, you know, kind of kind of idea, which is horrible. It's the worst thing you can do. You know, I, don't, I mean, I check I mean, I check my email and my work email. It's the last thing I check before I go to bed. It's the first thing I check in the morning. <laughs> Sure. But like I guess I, yeah. I can say there are times during the year where where I go camping or something like that and, and I'm disconnected and I don't feel irritability or pain. <laughs> I mean but I look at it as a utility. It's a it's a tool I use in my day to day life. Like like look, he was talking about and he's on the treadmill and he's looking at Twitter, he's 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 into his craft. And to me he's using it as a tool in his toolbox. Mm-hmm. There's other people I see that have practically given up on real life and sit on their couch mm-hmm. and their their whole life and, and being is looking at Facebook and looking at Twitter and posting what they ate on Instagram. It's like that, like it, it, 
to me, like I said, it's a, it's a utility that we use as a tool. Whereas I see other people, it's like it's cons- they they have they're consuming it and it's consuming them, mm-hmm. and it, it, it's what gives them their status and things like that. It's like it's uh, the AT and T commercial. The guy got it. The guy got a hundred likes on his selfie, and and like that's what makes his day. Yeah, I, I would rather uh, come to this podcast and interact with people and have a good conversation versus scrolling through Facebook, being more interested in what others are doing. I want to be out there doing so I could see for those people being irritable and, and, and quasi addicted per se. I don't know. That's my two cents. Certainly. (laughs) And there can, there can be like, I think, you know, the, the hundred likes idea, you know, or mm-hmm. I got a like, you know, so, yeah. oh, somebody retweeted me. It does kind of tickle that it, it gives you that response. You know, it gives you, a, you know, probably has the endorphins, you know, kick in, as they say, when you when you're addicted sure. to something, you know. But, but but do you feel like you failed if you don't get so many likes or you don't get a response? Depends on what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I guess like it's... my personal account, you know. Like, yeah, like I, I, I guess. Oh, no. And then I'm also like like. So lately i've been ultra aware of my account thanks to like signing up for something like think up but that's mm-hmm. the point is the is, is is a service like that helps you be better at being a twitter you mm-hmm. know or being a social twitter or being aware of the things you do do on there you know um so you know and i've been thinking about this too like like how much that twitter like like social le- like it's, it's like a layer of social that happens now and mm-hmm. especially our circles, because I know, you know, we're we're very interconnected with our, you know, I always like to say our podcast friends, you know, um, and that's where a lot of our socialness is happening. Uh, for me, that's my connection doing that chatting with Chachi on Gchat or whatever through the day. That's my I don't have a coworker over my right. shoulder. But I also wonder, are the people that are in the office instead of talking to their coworker over their shoulder and actually interacting with their coworkers and have a better relationship with them, hopefully are they just jumping on Twitter instead and say, Hey, what'd you think about that movie? Da, 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 you know, mm-hmm. um, or it could have been just the people in, in the office. So I don't know. It, it's, um, it depends on how people are using it. You yeah. know, it, it really just goes down, down to that. And even like your, our discussion with the, uh, uh, Dr. Nancy, uh, a, a couple of weeks ago was even like, it's not, it, it, the technology is not bad. It's how some people are using it. The person like I going back, notice like I got my, I cut my, I cut my glass mm-hmm. off of my glasses this week because I had to go to a wedding. I figured that'd be weird. I love the glasses. The glasses are, are I, I've been noticing them all throughout the show. And I'm thinking those are fantastic specs. I, I really like those. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> but but they had I had uh, zip ties in, in my Google Glass attached to them up until a few days ago. Um, but, you know, I was wearing it more, especially as my glasses broke a week ago and I was just wearing my glass through the week. And well, one problem is, OK, now I have to like sit by an outlet and charge these or else, I'm, <laughs> you know, just carry them around for no reason for the rest of the day. Um, but I can see that being a problem. Like, I don't think like I wonder what's going to be when I have a watch that if when when we all would when, when the technophiles like us have watches that are responding to us all day you know um you know because i i view it just like a text message or like any other message on your phone it's it's another notification and yes is it a distraction many it's times another response yes. too and it's another like oh i got something you know mm-hmm. again like that chemical response of oh okay okay you know uh i noticed um I, i've been doing an experiment lately i've been leaving this on do not disturb okay throughout the day um typically that also means that like anything important that comes through since i'm on yosemite and i got the whole uh convergence thing going on um anybody who messages me will actually come up on my computer so all that other noise Mm -hmm. that comes through on my phone right now doesn't happen it's been liberating (laughs) do you feel like you're more productive or you just you feel like you missed anything? Um, no, I don't feel like I've missed anything necessarily. And also, I've been also experimenting with like, you know, I, somebody I, I read the other day is like, you know, leaving your email open in a tab all day is a really, really bad idea. And it is. I obsessively check it. Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. And nothing changes. And it's just spam. And it's just, you know, I should check it like once every couple of hours. And even like the uh, the times or, you know, over the last week where I'm like, you know, checked it in. It's like it's it's like 10 11 o'clock and i haven't checked my email yet you know which is yeah. like okay you know that's fine i, I had a moment over the weekend actually we, we have we have a very buggy exchange server 
Uh, so it's not uncommon where I think my, my, my password had expired on Thursday and I never, uh, I never reset it. So I, and I couldn't reset it from home. I had to do it from work. So I was without work email for about two days <laughs> and, uh, it was kind of nice. I mean, I, I kind of enjoyed that. Uh, but I think, you know, once, once, once we got it going again, you know, I was, I was uh, doing a walking tour of the city of Worcester yesterday for a story we're working on. And, uh, you know, all, th- all throughout the tour, I'm walking with the police chief. I'm talking with them. I keep pulling my phone out. Okay, any new emails? Any new emails? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it sort of goes back to that addiction thing. But it's also sort of the, the expectation that's been put upon us. And, you know, in, in, in a lot of industries, too, that you have to be on call 24-7. And if you don't return an email within five or ten minutes, you know, they're going to automatically assume something's wrong or, or you're just ignoring them in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, uh, let's move on then with that. And let us know. Let us you guys know about uh, Chachi says, nope, he's just talking with me and to Twitter. So he's not talking to his coworkers. <laughs> That's understandable from my understanding of his situation. Um, tip of the week. You know, this. Uh, oh, you got one, too. I got one, too. You go first. OK, OK. Uh, this is this is an old tip, but um, I noticed they updated and it was one of those. I was in one of those. I need Photoshop. And, and, and I don't need Photoshop for high end stuff. Typically, I'm not designing a billboard or crazy web graphics or anything like that it's usually like i need to put an image in here for this i need this 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 um you know for for my one job where i don't have access to it where i usually need something like this it's putting the like soft corners on staff Mm -hmm. pictures and and making them transparent in a png so they look good in squarespace right um pixlr and it's also is really good for people on Chromebooks as well. Um, if you go to pixlr.com, uh, and it's actually been updated recently, at least visually on the front. And they have like several levels of this. If you just need like a f- quick photo editor, they have a Express, they have a Nomadic, um, but the editor is what you want. And this is actually by Autodesk. And I think they do have a iPhone app uh, component to this as well. But again, I think it's one of those, those Express or Pixlr Omatics. Um, but it's a web app. It's basically I don't know how they got away with this much Photoshopness as a web app. Um, and now actually you can log in with Google and it, you can keep files on it in its own um, its own kind of file library, which I don't think technically connects to your Google Drive. Um, but I have a couple like podcast graphics and uh, before I picked up Photoshop about a year ago. Um, so I can pick up from any of my projects right in here. And it's just like I have this... Uh, dummy staff picture and i add my stuff around it and and spit it out as a png that saves on my desktop and i'm good to go uh so for those that are just looking for that little bit of photoshop instead of like grabbing it you know you know you know paying the ten dollars a month i i know it's such a high bar now to get photoshop right um but if you just need to do a couple little things this is a really cool way to do it um i know i think chachi was asking about like they need ms paint for for mac for instance you know, and I think we were talking about using GIMP and, and, and which Gimp's, is GIMP. GIMP is fine, but you kind of need to even you need you, to learn it. If you, either way, you need to learn it yeah. for a mm-hmm. Photoshop like program. You need to learn it. You need to figure out how layers work. You got to understand the metaphor. Um, but if you're familiar with Photoshop to begin with, which I, I think a lot of people are at this point, um, especially if you went to like a little I'm mean, teaching Photoshop in high school at this point, um, you can dump into this pretty quick. Uh, the biggest thing is uh, don't expect key commands to work most of the time, like because most of them are like, you know, command tab goes to actually to a different thing, you know, or mm-hmm. reloads the page or refresh the page by accident all the time with this thing. Um, but PIXLR.com if you want to check that out. So uh, no, it's, it's actually pretty nice. The, the one thing I'm it doesn't have a magnetic lasso. <laughs> but it's like the fundamentals are there. The fundamentals are there. And it actually reminds me of like Photoshop (laughs) three, which isn't that that old. You know how long I had like Photoshop seven sitting around and then CS two. And that's uh, what I was thinking. CS three. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's it's not that far off. How do you get what are you doing? Set main color. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, the palette's a little weird. But you got your layers, you got your history, you yeah, got your it navigator. It, it, it's, it's, it's there. It's enough. So, uh, What's your tip, sir? 
What is my tip? Oh, hyperlapse. Yes. So we covered hyperlapse a while back. I've been using it here and there. Did here you see my there. ride along cane from the trip this weekend? I did not see that. But there is a hidden labs menu in the app. Oh, no. What? There's Yeah. Where you can turn on like 1080p and 24 and 40 speed what? multipliers. There's all these hidden hidden things you can you can turn on. So you open hyperlapse and tap the screen four times with four fingers. What? Hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second. I got I gotta see this one. It says it, it can it can it may take you one, a couple. One, two, three, four. No. One, two, three, four. Try putting your oh, fingers. Oh, 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 there oh you I go. got it. I got it. And there's a there's a <laughs> message from my mom too. Yeah, resolution 720p. I can pump that up to 1080. Uh, frame rate 30, 24. Background save plus library. Calibration mode. Hyperlapse extreme. So I think this is wow. pretty cool. And I wonder, are are we going to see other companies start to put these things in their apps where there's like. Oh. Some kind of, or or how many other apps have this kind of thing in their it, app where you can it's tweak? Like, it, it's like the equivalent of the uh, the Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, I mean, there's there's really no much. There's no market for DVDs much anymore. I mean, this is it's perfect. <laughs> so, like, I'm excited about this, and I'm hoping other apps follow suit and kind of give you back end hidden configuration, something that you don't want the typical user probably going in and tweaking and messing with but yeah. for someone that's going to take the time to do this they're they're going to be able to either remove the app reinstall it and it'll set like, back to defaults there's but like levels for like the sounds like like there's levels for each sound apparently in this application in in this menu um i looked up hyperlapse oh, it says in your article actually uh hyperlapse extreme as 24 and 40x speed multipliers Whoa! Have fun with that, guys. Well, because and I think that you know it's something you pretty much have to do because the built-in, you know, the built-in time lapse in 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 uh in in iOS eight is nice, but mm-hmm. you know it's really all or none unless I'm missing something. No, you're right. Uh, from what I've seen, it's all or none. Oh, I just kicked my camera. Am I okay? Yeah, you're Way fine. All right, cool. You're fine. All right. So so explain to me because now I, now I want I I had a I, I have my work phone with me. I did not have hyperlapse on my work phone, but but but, but tell me what what do you do here? It's uh, you, you uh, uh, tap on the screen with four fingers four times. Really, I just kept tapping until it went. <laughs> and you'll see, you'll see the entire thing like do that uh, the flip over thing, and it'll just be a menu. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear him hitting his phone. <laughs> You're just beating the hell up. <laughs> you know what? It's the work phone. I don't care. Oh no. That's on the record. Um, <laughs> awesome. No, I'm but I like the I like the fact that you can at least in, increase the resolution. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm kind of curious. I mean, you figure how many how many more Facebook owned and you consider the number of apps that Facebook's putting out now. How many how many uh, how many Facebook apps out there maybe have something built into that? Mm-hmm. Okay, because and or are we going to see more stuff? That, and for the iOS users out there, there's now test flight. That you mm-hmm. can get where you yeah. can actually become beta testers. I haven't, I haven't, I'm actually going to learn and ask about that in a meeting next week. Cool. But where, where, if you want to start getting people your product ahead of public release, you can send them invites using test flight and that gives them like pre releases to the apps before they're released to the app store. Oh, I can't wait for that invite, that invite for the uh, LO apps. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jeez, I've been just posting myself drinking coffee every morning on there, just so there's <laughs> something on there, just, just something. So, all right, uh, with that, hey, want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway, uh, feeding feeding the people that coming in. Malenga was here beforehand and, and driving my dog nuts and chilla, and we got guests later tonight. And it's it's nice. It's dinner time, and uh, Slice on Broadway helps us out. Go check them out. Um, they're here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Sorry, sorry, Jim. Um, eh, I'll just sit here and drink my beer. <laughs> oh no! Um, but no, they're right here on the uh, right, right here along the T line and uh, in, in Beachview. Uh, check them out. Slice on Broadway. Doc, 
Com. Uh, they're also down in Carnegie, down on Main Street. Uh, pretty cool location. We got to check out a couple weeks ago. Um, great gourmet pizza. Uh, I even snagged something. They have a stuffed pepper uh, pizza and hoagie. And well, you uh, quit it already. <laughs> oh, you want it? You want it? Next time you swing by town, you know you're coming down here. <laughs> and, and the night that they make any hoagie into a pizza, they make any hoagie into pizza. So uh, you know you can get that Gonzo as a as a pizza, and we highly recommend it. So go check it out, sliceonbroadway.com. Support the guys and support the shows, and, and follow them on the Facebooks and the Twitters. Even if you can't get into get 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 in and check them out, tell them tell them that you uh, you know like like Loke in Boston or wish you were in the area and could check them out. And you heard about on, about them on the Awesome Cast. Um, so we got a couple stories here. First, we actually we had a question. From the chat room. So we're going to help him out. Uh, Chachi is uh, apparently looking for a new phone. Of course, he's, he's uh, sticking with the Android. Uh, well, technically, he has an iPhone for work, too. But um, And he's asking LG G3 or the Samsung 5. Um, now, Chilla, I think you're the one familiar with these. Uh, so I, well, I mean, I'm not a heavy, heavy Android user. No. But I do, devices do pass my desk and I do get to play with them. Um, I also have family members that have devices. Um, so I have, I have experience with both. Um, there have been LG devices that I haven't liked. There's been Samsung devices I haven't liked. I would say personally in general, like I saw with the S3 to S4, like bloatware they claimed that it decreased, but there was more to me. There was more junk. And I know someone that got an S five and you look at like, it was a, I think it was like an eight, a 16 gig device. And they had like five gig free. If that, and we, we talked about this recently, like it, it's getting, bad. yeah, it's, it's getting a little ridiculous. And, and I would, per, I personally like the Nexus devices. So if I had an option, I would go, with a Nexus device or my, my favorite devices I've seen are, are the Moto X line. I mean, it's, it's close to stock with minor tweaks. Mm -hmm. In fact, you should get, you should be able to get an, one of the older Moto X is pretty cheap because the X plus or X plus one or whatever, whatever the next version of the Moto X is coming out. That's another device that I think they're, they're going a little too large on. I think it's a 5.2 inch. You're going from four, seven to five, two, I think. Um, so the device is getting a little, little large, but I, I knew, I know people with the Moto X and I, I thought it was a, a great device. Um, obviously that, that was the first one that did okay. Google without being, it doesn't need plugged in. They have a special sound processor in there that just tracks for that. Um, also one of the things that someone showed me, they're like, they can actually, the Moto X they had were the without hitting the power button or any of the hardware buttons, they could turn on and off their device without really pressing any of the buttons, which I Ooh. thought was kind of weird that this was like a thing that they, they were like, cause they actually switched from the Moto X to the iPhone six. And the one complaint was that they had to touch the power button or the home button to interact with the device. So the accelerometer on the Moto X, when you pick it up, it realizes it's staying in in, in a single place or whatever. Um, when you pick it up, the screen automatically comes on and you can un slide to unlock or whatever. Or if you don't have a lock screen, you just start using it. Um, then they actually had a, a widget that they could tap and it would put the screen to sleep. So they'd be doing their thing, go back to the home screen and hit the button and put their phone down and they would never hit like a hardware button per se. So I thought that was an interesting concept. And I, I liked the fact that when you picked it up and maybe all, maybe there's stuff on all or widgets you can get, but that was just stock out of the box with the Motorola. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Motorola stuff isn't a gimmick. Like I hear people on, on the Samsung devices that it's supposed to follow your eyes when you're reading and people say it works 75 percent of the time and and you saw that give me stuff on on uh winter laptops that remember the one that mm -hmm. would like remember the one we we, we saw the story about where where it's an hp one that would like followed your head mm -hmm. you know but it wouldn't follow black people 
you know, like, like it does it's not, it's not a hundred percent. It's like, Oh, this thing we can sort of do. And we put it in here. And um, it, that's what it feels like. It, and, you know, kind of the old, like, well, if it, it's in an iPhone, then it's going to work kind of idea. Like touch idea is fantastic. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, I love that it's being used for like more applications and they took their time with it versus, yeah. you know, the, half the technologies you mentioned. Well, it was there. funny it's- because someone, someone with a, with a galaxy S five has the fingerprint sensor at work. Mm-hmm. And they say, is that the one on the back? No, theirs is on the... Because like, I've heard about the one on the back and how weird that is. Theirs is on the Samsung hardware button. Yeah. But because it's a slim bar, you have to, like, scan your finger. Yeah, you have to actually move it across. And they said that it worked, they said that, that it worked for them less than 50% of the time. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, I could see why you wouldn't want to use that. I'm it, like, I live and die by, by my fingerprint ID. Mm-hmm. Jim, you have something? Yeah, 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 you mentioned you mentioned the whole uh, moving your head from side to side that deal. There, there is which is you, you guys probably are well aware. But it's built into uh, assi- the assisted function in um, in the iPhone and iOS. You you can do, create a switch where if you jerk your head to the, the side and you can activate menus. But it, huh. it just seems like you give yourself whiplash when you're trying to do that. So uh, uh, I tried it just for the hell of it, just to see if it uh, if it worked, if it was useful, and and, and it clearly was not. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure for somebody it is out there. Yeah, I think it's um, I, I think I think nobody really jumps into those those physical assistant things. You know, you know the one I see a lot of younger people use hmm. is the flash, the flash or camera flash when you get a text. I've noticed yeah. that. I see a lot. I, I, of people I'm filming high that. school games again, so I'm seeing <laughs> all the kids with their ca- their cracked screens. And how <laughs> do they have like the six plus phone size phones? You know, it's like that is not necessary um do you remember that scene in dumb and dumber where uh I, <laughs> trust me this has a point um <laughs> the scene in dumb and dumber where, where where jim carrey's character is imagining uh a romantic night with with mary swanson uh and 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 all of a sudden she takes her shirt off and her and her and her, and her chest is just two headlights and it wakes him up and he <laughs> wakes up and he's behind the wheel of a car and he's almost getting hit head-on by a truck you know what i'm talking about yes anyway. uh I have that. I had that. I had that on my work phone. And one day I'm in the news truck and it's like 430 in the morning. We're on our way to a story. And I just I'm kind of like dozing off a little bit. And I have the phone held with the back facing me for some reason. And I'm kind of drifted off and the phone's in my hand and I get I'm getting a phone call and the phone starts flashing. And I literally woke up screaming because I (laughs) thought that that was I thought that was a car coming my way, which, you know, clearly. (laughs) But uh the truck up goes, what the hell's your problem? <laughs> I've, I've seen people use that, and I can't believe how many people I see use the soft home button. Well, you know why? A lot of people, I, the, the people that I know have used the soft home button, a lot of it is because, uh, at least on, on, on the iPhone 5, is that home button uh, the, the, the wore out so quickly. Well, and Wait, wait. Know, so I know, I know, I know the, 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 the people that I've seen it with. Yeah. Well, my sister used it because she broke her home button along with the rest of her screen. I, I ride the train in the morning, so I and I, I work in mobility for work, so I try to pay attention to like I do stupid stuff like how many people have Samsung devices, how many people have Motorola devices, how many people are carrying an iPhone, how many people are reading from a Kindle. Like I keep metrics on that uh, mentally every day to and from work. Obviously, I have a slice of the demographic because it's only people that ride the train. Yeah, but. I'm amazed that even people on the train that I know their home button works because when their thumb is towards the bottom of the device, they hit the hardware button and it works because I thought the same thing. And then when they actually put the soft button at the top center of the device. So when their thumbs closer to up there, they huh. hit the soft button. So there's a thing in accessibility where you, you can have a home button. That's a picture on the screen that hovers over the interface. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. By the way, please go up to somebody on the T tomorrow and just go, excuse me, I noticed that your home button is working, but you've been using a soft <laughs> home button on top. What the hell? Yeah. Why, why are like, are they too lazy? Like it, like if I can only, I only have to move my thumb two inches if I'm up here and I don't so, have to go the three inches so, all the way so to the bottom. I, you know, I, so this is an assistive thing. I've never heard of this. 
But I see like I but you see, see people, people all using time. it all so, the time. So 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 what is this like group of people that found this option? Are they older people? They're, they're all over the place. Now I will say to to Loke's point, like a lot of people use that when their home button starts to flake out. Yeah. But I do see I, people on the T that use both. So I know their home button works. I'm sorry. I just saw in the chat. Uh, Chachi says, I gave you two choices for phones. I have no <laughs> idea what the answer was. <laughs> Chachi, Chachi, your answer is pretty clear. It's get a damn iPhone for one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, I, I will say this. I remember when the, when the first, and, and I mean, at this point, I can't even remember the name of the first one. But when the, when the initial Android phone hit the market, and I had, you know, I, I kind of lobbied the bosses at KDK saying, hey, look, you know, we've done the iPhone. Let's let's do let's do the Android story. And so I remember Chach being one of the first ones to get mm-hmm. that phone. And I will say this. I, you know, Verizon had given me a couple loaners just to try out. And, and I had one of the initial droids. And, you know, I, I, I got it. You know, I see why people are very loyal to it. I just, you know, as you mentioned before, I'm, I've, I've sort of, you know, have so many Apple products. And, and I like how, how well they interface with each other. But, you know, I... I as luck would have it, about about three months ago, I was at a bar uh, and and I threw my business card into a bowl and I and I won I won a Galaxy Tab uh, a, a Galaxy Tab two tablet, and you know so I played around with it for a while and I really you know I liked it but I just didn't have use for two two you know for for two tablets so I gave it to my mom and she loves it, but um, I you know I, I I will say this I think I think that that LG has been doing some some really amazing things but I think in the end Samsung. You know, they're going to be the pioneer with, with, with any Android-related uh, uh, innovation. So I say go with the five, Chach. There's your answer. It came from me. I'm a straight talker. I'm a news guy. You can trust me. Samsung 5 market. I'm saying go, LG. Less bloat. More more space available. I guess it, it depends on what you're looking to do. And I, w- I would follow. I would, And I don't know this statistic. I would look at... Who has the quickest time to release on when a new version of Android comes out? Yes, yeah, that's that's a very good point. Is LG is LG on top of their game? What versions of Android are they running on the device? Because I Samsung, I don't even think has Android four point four point four is out, and I don't think Samsung has it on any of their devices yet. What that's, awful name are they up to now? By the way, it's still KitKat. We'll be at L, but nobody knows what L stands for yet, or will it just be L? Like everyone's calling it Android L, but it has no name. It'll be Android. What should I call it? Uh, the, I've it? heard licorice. I've heard uh, Lemonhead. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> I, I don't think I, I. I don't think any self-respecting software engineer would sign off on on putting their heart and soul into something that's going to be called Lemonhead. <laughs> KitKat ran with it. I don't. I don't. I, I think. No, no. But, but Lemonhead I- implies that it's that it's a lemon. I, I you know, I, I feel yeah. like. Mm. Well, I don't. But I think here's the thing: if they're going to continue to try to partner with candy companies, now you can't just do licorice. Because you have to do Twizzler. You'd have to do that, and that's a T. So how many public? Oh, L, 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 yeah. How many public companies are well how many candies begin with an l well hershey's makes luden's cough drops so you can go <laughs> <laughs> it's the phone you use when you're sick um wow i'm looking i'm looking at candy beginning with l uh for further uh he's saying the five is on 4.4.2 and g3 says lollipop. but that's not a four four but that's like but when you think lollipop it's it's blow pop Okay, let's move on. Let's like, move on. Okay, let's so here's lifesavers. I could see lifesavers. Life-saver. I could see that. I could see, I see that, that being taffy. Laffy Taffy. That'd Laffy be a good taffy. one. Uh, so, uh, uh, story. Actually, this one uh, passed on to me from uh, CBS. Uh, CBS this morning, um, they had an announcement from Waze, who is owned by Google. Mm-hmm. I've been noticing more and more of the Waze stuff popping up with Google as we were traveling this weekend uh, down to Baltimore. Um, Waze navigation app teams up with cities and states to share traffic data. So we're talking about like they're getting the data for, say, construction straight from the municipality. Um, apparently, it's going to be a pretty interesting task because they said, yeah, um, all the uh, all the municipalities, they all have completely different structures on how they're doing their data. Um, I know we're on, on this kick of doing um, um, uh, they're, they're trying to get all the data accessible here in pittsburgh i'm sure a lot of people it's it's a lot harder uh for them to do 
Um, for one, are you guys using ways uh, to get around? I know that's it's kind of my primary, and I kind of just dance around between that Apple Maps and Google, depending on what I'm want to do. But I really kind of like ways for like pretty much giving me a heads up on everything. Um, are, what are you guys using? I've been using uh, to to be honest with you, Sorg. I've been um since I moved up or actually moved uh, locations here. I used to live where I was about ten miles out of Boston. And now I'm literally, I'm about a mile down the street from Fenway Park, so I moved. And in the interim, I don't really drive as much anymore. I drive to work and back, and that's it. Hmm. Uh, and so what I'll use is, when, when I am behind the wheel, I still use the GPS, only because I, 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 I have the, uh, you know, I have the traffic updates that are, that are piped in via, you know, via the radio um, into the GPS uh, which, you know, and it's pretty accurate in terms of construction and everything like that. I just, I, I've, I've still not been been totally sold on the concept of using the phone straight up as my only GPS, although I will use Google Maps uh, because I, I find that to be pretty, pretty well, um, pretty accurate. Uh, uh, Waze is good. I, I do like Waze. In fact, I, I try to, uh, I try to incorporate it as, as much as I legally could when I was doing, when I was reporting traffic. I have a, I, I installed a uh, a uh, Pioneer app radio head unit in my in my car, and it does have a function where I can route Waze as the primary GPS. You know, I nice. plug my phone in, but but it can route it right into it right into the head units. Um, I, I haven't had a heck of a lot of luck with it, but I think Waze. I think you know it, it was certainly a wise investment buying into them. But I, but I think you know in terms of me getting around, I I, I use so much public transportation here that. Uh, you know, I, I'm just kind of loyal to Google Maps for, for, for everything, you know, whether it's being on the bike or taking the tea or, or, or driving. Certainly. I, so since Apple Maps has become available in in Mac OS as well yeah. as the iOS, I find my so I was using Google Maps all the time. I never jumped from Google Maps. And I stuck with Google Maps after Apple Maps came around. And now I'm. I'm I'm more leaning towards Apple Maps just from the fact of taking it and I know you're a diehard with Chrome but taking it from Safari and the Maps app to my device and the the unified search and things of that nature I do find myself leaning now more towards Apple Maps than I did with Google. Hmm. Um I do find myself occasionally using Google Maps when I tap both at map apps are right next to each other so if i tap one if i tap google maps instead it's not like i leave it just to just to go look at a different map app i don't find myself using the map i actually find myself using the map apps more when i'm in not driving and when i'm in a city like i went to, to wizard con in, in philly and i wanted to be able to get around on foot i found myself using the maps apps more then because Nine times out of ten around here, I know where I'm going, or I know a, a better way than either map app told me to go. Yeah, my yeah. my use case is well, I'm going to a lot of random places for shoots and, and stuff, so I, I kind of rely on it on ways mostly for mm -hmm. that. Uh, but even just putting on just going to commutes and like like I'm at Chipotle and say, hey, get me home, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, in that case, I'll, I'll just rely on Apple Maps just for a. Hey, what's the best way home? You know, Waze has seemed to be the best, like gives me the best options or routes and actually seems to adapt when I say, oh, we're going to start going this way. I, I know a back way and it'll start mm -hmm. actually starting to take me that back way. Okay. Like it's more adaptive. Um, also, you haven't lived until you've downloaded the Terry Crews uh, voice on Waze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had but, that. But there was the one time, that, and the one thing, and this is what makes me nervous, the one time that Waze tried to send you through the Squirrel Hill tunnels because there was no, no, now, there was no traffic, and there was no traffic because the tunnels were closed. But that's what this story fixes. And I think they've, they've improved that since too. Okay. But, but if they're tapped in to say what the Pittsburgh, you know, says is happening with construction, then it'll know, hey, there's construction there, and it'll rattle around it automatically. It's not going to wait for somebody to tag it, because that's what I was waiting for, mm -hmm. somebody to say, hey, no, it. there's yeah. construction, you can't do this. You know, um, it's saying, oh, there's no cars reporting going through here, so it must be wide open. Um, yeah, well, I got stuck with that, too, about a year ago, but they, they've definitely gotten better with it. And and there's there's different, you know, like in, in the Pittsburgh area, it's not just, you know, they, they, they who they pull the traffic information from. You know, I, I know that um, at KDK, the system we use, they use uh, traffic.com, 
uh, which is the pro predominant uh, provider in the area, but there's also Metro Traffic, and, and I worked at Metro Traffic for a while. And, and the thing about Metro Traffic was I worked in the control center, which was out in Green Tree, and we would have to manually enter incidents, construction, and that sort of thing. And what was one of my favorite things to do was just to go through and see. I mean, they, they really were planning for every possible contingency because I, this is my right hand to God. We One night, overnight, it was 3 in the morning. We tried something out. Uh, there was a hotline you could call. I think it used to be the uh, the, the, the tell me, the, the pound uh, uh, or 1-800-555-TELL, and it was like uh, star, star tell on your AT&T phone. But it was a voice activated assistant system that was free and you could say hey give me a traffic update well one night we decided to, to, to we said okay four pit tunnels are closed and we're going looking for a reason and one of them was bullfight <laughs> <laughs> so you called up the hotline and it would say the squirrel little tunnels are closed due to bullfight <laughs> and the reason i'm saying this is because you know, in terms of getting the traffic information, getting the incident information, there are wildly disparate systems out there. So, you know, you have one company using this, one company using that. I don't know what PennDOT uses. I will say from from experience that um, you know, I had a little a little falling out with PennDOT a couple of months before I left KDKA because one night they made a big deal to us because they they have traffic center traffic centers that are open twenty four hours in Pennsylvania, always watching the roads. And the day after the Steelers won the AFC Championship on the way to losing against Green Bay in the Super Bowl back in 2011, um, I'm driving to work that morning, and I'm rounding the bend on the Parkway East, and all of a sudden I see the tunnels are closed. And I'm thinking, oh, this is not good because, you know, I have to be at work. And PennDOT had the opportunity to put up on the signs, hey, tunnels closed, exit at Edgewood, Swissville. But instead it just said, congratulations, Steelers. To which I, to which I complained, and I think it was a, a totally legitimate complaint. Hey, I'm glad you guys are rooting for the Steelers, but that's not what those signs are for. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I totally I, agree with that. I called them out on the air. I tweeted about it, and the spokesman for PennDOT was livid. He said, "You know, Twitter's a dangerous thing um, because apparently people in Harrisburg saw that and said you sh you shouldn't be doing that." And he goes, and, "And now we can't do that anymore." And I said, "Well, good." You can't. You, I said I, I was trying to be diplomatic about it, but finally I said, you know, I could I could turn around and do a story about you, you know, taxpayer dollars using you know using to support these systems. So the reason I'm telling you this story is because it's a great idea, and I hope I hope PennDOT you know can, can get their butts in gear and, and and at least provide the proper information because you know if you're going to use the science just to advertise something that you know everybody on the road if if you're on the road 12 hours after the Steelers win you already know they won. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, certainly. Um, but all right. Uh, LOK, I know I'm looking at the time. I know we got to get you out of here. Um, we got to set up to talk about some video games. Hey, thanks for coming along. Uh, and uh, uh, tell everybody uh, where they can reach you and, uh, and uh, what you're doing up there in Boston. It's a pleasure. I appreciate it. No, things are uh, things are going up, going well up here and uh, you're still doing the news there. Uh, Primarily weekend mornings, but you know I, I fill in from time to time. WCVB.com. We're always streaming live. Every newscast every day from morning until night. So, so, so you're That's telling me Chachi, Chachi can still still get the news from you. Chachi can still watch me all the time. Yeah, that that, that we still do that. Um, I haven't done anything for any of the local stations lately, but you know from time to time I'll pop up on Channel Four, uh, which is our sister station. So you know any any way to uh, any way to you know twist the screws a little bit with KDK <laughs> on all, all about it. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing i left there i left there on good terms but you know it's just like it's it's still you know it's still fun to kind of like kind of like you know poke the bear a little bit because um uh you know it is what it is <laughs> awesome awesome and chilla he's at chilla on the twitters and i'm gonna have to join this acorn app now thanks yeah okay. yeah you should yeah um oh I almost, i'm at sorgatron on the twitters as well i almost forgot uh real quick real quick plugs Holy crap, I have a lot of them this week. Uh, of course, OhioLinux.org. Uh, Ohio Linux Fest is October 24th through 26th in uh, Columbus, PA. No, Columbus, Ohio. Wow. Oh, Columbus, what PA? am I doing? Greater, Greater Columbus <laughs> Convention Center in downtown Columbus. Um, of course, you can check out the last episode. What's <laughs> you can check out the last oh, keep episode. Going, keep going. I'm going to find where Columbus, PA is. Okay. <laughs> You can find you're going to be very lonely if you go down there. Um, but uh, you can find out more information. We talked to them last episode last week. Uh, uh, awesome cast 119 or 219. I believe that is. I did mark it 119 some places. Sorry about that. Um, also, we we discussed last week the Car Carnegie Mellon 
University School of Computer Science 25 year celebration. Those videos are online, so go look up SCS25. You'll find that site. I don't think it's a URL. Yeah, it's a crazy URL. It's just look at SCS25 Carnegie Mellon. You'll find it the 25th anniversary. All the videos are up there. They used uh, Google, I'm sorry, YouTube Live uh, to do that. So everything's available. And also, big. Sh- Lifestyle Life Shell is on Kickstarter as well. Check them out, lifeshell.com. I think they got links up there for the Kickstarter. You can get the Whistler, uh, 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 the Whistler iPhone case uh, to protect yourself. Uh, and I think it's fifty-seven dollars for you to get it. They're at thirty-six thousand dollars of their seventy seventy thousand dollar goal, or twenty days to goal to go. So please uh, help them out. Some friends of the show. We talked with them. If you look at awesomecast.net and look up Life Shell or look up Alpha Lab, uh, we have uh, some great interviews with them there. Um, last week on my podcast, Good Morning, over at Sorgatron.com, I talked about my grandfather and his uh, his uh, being an 85-year-old with the computer aptitude, basically. Um, and I talked a little bit about the digital projector down at Hollywood Theater that I mentioned on the shows last week. Um, and also, uh, you jag off John Chamberlain has been on the show, go to yajagoff.com. There's an article over there about getting the word jag off in Webster's dictionary. I, he, I'm signing up right now <laughs> as we speak. Starting a petition. Um, he was actually on uh, KDK AM radio here locally, uh, to talk about it. So, uh, please, uh, go check that out. Yajagoff.com. That's Y A Jagoff, two F's. There's two F's in Jagoff if you're not from the area. Uh, so with that, and you can check out all of our stuff. We're at awesomecast.net, all the rest of the shows at sorgatronmedia.com. Um, you can join us here live every Tuesday night at 6 30 p.m. Eastern time where we cannot help you, um, also get an new android phone like chachi uh and you can hit us up uh, at awesomecast on the twitters awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com follow and like us on uh on facebook on google plus and you can subscribe to us on itunes youtube stitcher spreaker and iheart radio video and audio formats uh so with that thanks again jim loke he's at loke on the twitters at chill on the twitters at sorgatron thank you to our awesome chat room hopping all night you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week. Getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.